In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create stylized, puffy looking clouds using Cinema 4D and Redshift that'll make Bob Ross proud. Making clouds is actually super easy. You don't even need particles at all. All you need is Cinema 4D, R20 and above and Redshift. And this technique that I'm going to be showing you is super flexible. You can apply it to any object and you'll have the ability to easily adjust the style to make any kind of cloud that you want. Now be sure to download the project file so you can follow along. You'll find that link in the description below. This cloudy tutorial was brought to you by the little rays of sunshine over at School of Motion, where you never learn alone. When you sign up for a course, you'll be learning from and with artists from all around the world. The courses are based on real world briefs so you can see and learn what it's like to create client work and by the end of the course have a few new pieces to add to your portfolio. Each School of Motion student is assigned a teaching assistant that ensures you get all the technical or creative support that you need. Way more helpful than fire emoji comments. Now if that all sounds good to you, check the link below and use the offer code IDESIGN100 to save $100 off of any of my 3D courses. Alright, on to the tutorial. The first step is just creating your basic cloud geometry. This could be literally any shape, but I'm going to try to make this look like an actual cartoony cloud. So I just got some spheres in my case uh, that are orientated in a kind of a cloudyish uh, formation here. And what I'm going to do is with cartoon clouds, they usually have like the bottoms uh, chopped off. Uh, that sounded very violent, uh, but we're just going to flatten out the bottom here of these clouds. I'm going to do that by using just a melt deformer. And we're going to make this a child of the cloud null in the same level of hierarchy here. So it's going to affect all of our spheres. And then we're just going to bring down the strength to 0%. And now I can just select that melt deformer, bring this down and kind of just, again, just chop off these spheres. Maybe I can go in, select this sphere, maybe get this a little bit bigger, but something like that. And you can see that my objects are a little chunky. So I'm just going to go into my spheres. We'll just bring up the segments to about, you know, 200 or so, and we'll evenly subdivide this using the icosahedron type. And if I hit N and then B, you can see how nicely subdivided this is versus just your standard. So icosahedron and fairly high segments, because what we're going to do next is add even more fidelity and more detail, more lumpiness using not just more geometry, but a displacer. So I'm going to hit N and then A to go to garage shading without lines. And let's add a displacer. I'm just going to place this in the same level of hierarchy as the clouds. Let's go into the shading tab and let's add some noise. So you can see we got all this lumpy noise here. And again, if we did not have high segments, this would look all cruddy and janky. Let's unjankify that and bring that up. And let's go to this placer, and this just looks kind of lumpy. The one noise type that I thought looked really good with kind of this kind of like a cartoony stylized cloud was this Voronoi 1. And if I increase the size here, you can see this looks uh, not like a uh, nice cloud, almost looks like a bunch of uh, low poly rocks or something. But if we go into this placer and then go to the object tab and invert the height, you can see this looks just very lumpy and you can see those black and white values of this noise doing their thing. And one thing we can do is clamp the high clip here. And now we just got a, some kind of almost looks like a warts or something like that, which is lovely. But if we increase uh, the scale here, basically what we're doing is just creating a little bit more of the lumpy detail here without adding more spheres. So I can go and just adjust the seed to whatever I want. And we're just looking at like, okay, are we getting these extra little lumps on the side there? And I think this is looking pretty good. And again, the more you bring this clip down, the more or less you have these uh, lumps all over the place. Okay. So I would say, let's say this looking good right there. Okay. Good seed right there. What we can do now is use this geometry to create our cloudy, fog. Okay. And what we're going to use is a fog volume to create that little cloudy look. And how we can do that is by going to our volume builder menu, grabbing a volume builder and just placing everything underneath that volume builder. And you can see we have all those 3d pixels, those voxels and the, the, the lower the centimeters here, the more fidelity we get smaller pixels, more resolution, the bigger the pixel, the less detail it is, the more 
the more pixelated everything looks. But we're not actually going to use this sign distance field. We are going to generate fog volume, okay? And once we change that to fog, you can see that instead of those little 3D pixels, we now have all these little dots, and they're kind of spread apart. So as of right now, we don't have a very dense fog volume. So to do that, I'm just going to bring down that voxel size to 2. One thing you should note is the lower this number, the more memory it's going to take up. You can always keep track of the memory down here. But I found that if you work with a size of like 2 or something and make all your adjustments, you can lower this down to say 1 or whatever before you finally render. But as far as working, it's pretty good to keep it with 2 and everything uh, stays pretty light in your viewport. And in your render but if we go in actually render this fire off the redshift render view you're going to see that absolutely nothing is going on here and that's because even though we're generating a fog volume using this volume builder we have no way of this being compatible to being rendered by redshift until we do two things number one is going to our material manager here and creating a redshift material in a volume material okay and what we're going to do is we're going to apply that to our volume builder here and there's one other step we need to take and that is by going into our redshift volume material and just choosing the channel that we want to be rendered as a fog volume and if we go to the drop down menu you'll see there is this volume builders area and you should see the name of your volume builder in here so in my case my volume builder is named volume builder it's the default name so it shows up here i'm just going to select it and still nothing happens okay and that's because we don't have any lights in our scene so let me just close out of this redshift volume material real quick and let's go to redshift objects and let's just grab a redshift sky here and wait for it boom we got this uh, chunky pixelated mess and here's where we can adjust things like uh, the turbidity which just kind of scatters the light we can bring up the intensity here let's blur the horizon and just kind of move it down so we just get this nice like kind of glowy sunlight, uh, nice nice vibes there. Let's actually go in, maybe we'll create a, an infinite light to kind of act as our sunlight, and we'll hit the R key for rotation, and let's really crank up the intensity here to like say six, and here we can kind of change the color to maybe like a orangish type of look, okay? So we're not gonna really concern ourselves too much with the color, but just that we can like adjust the angle and see all the details so if we really angle this you can see all this little pixelated mess going on here and that is because if you look at our fog volume all we see is like white okay and if we go to our volume builder and click on our clouds here you can see there's this inside voxel fall off and this maximum voxel fall off. well let's just go ahead and let's just put in a value of 10 and you'll see that all of these voxels, all these dots are no longer white. We have this gradation from black to white. And you can see that in our render view, everything just kind of smoothed out. So what's going on? Well, in our voxel, you can either have a value of 0 or 1. And 1 is fully white, and 0 is black. And you can think of that as like your transparency or your opacity. So whatever is 1 or white, just like a, a matte, will have full opacity, and whatever is black will have 0% opacity. And if we increase this voxel fall off to 20, you'll see how this smooths out even more because we're kind of eating away at the volume, making it a little bit more transparent on the outside and slowly bringing up the opacity on the inside, creating this nice transition, okay? And when we don't have that, all these voxel pixels are just totally on 100% opacity and that's why it looks all chunky. Now, what I like to do is just use this maximum voxel fall off and turn that on. And what this will do is create a nice gradient from black or zero to white or one. And you'll have this nice smooth grazation from 0% opacity to 100%. And you can see how even our edges are kind of see through now. Now, one way we can kind of control how thick our volume is or how much light it can absorb is by going back into our redshift volume material here and let me just add a an object in here like a nice little cylinder and let's just rotate this like so it's an amazing render here okay and you'll see that this volume is fairly thick we can't really see through it and that's where these two options here they're very important as far as what your volume material looks like and the first up is this scatter coefficient, which basically means 
how much light is penetrating your volume the, to the inside of your volume. So if I crank up this value, you can see how bright this gets. And that's because more light is being scattered within the volume and it's just illuminating everything. Now this absorption coefficient means that that light is gonna be more absorbed and you're gonna see this looks darker and darker and looks more like smoke because what this means is that more light is being absorbed so that's why it's looking a little bit darker. So what you can do if you wanna have like a very see-through volume is have this absorption coefficient fairly low and that's too bright, we have too much scatter so I'll bring this down and you can start to see really touchy here but you can start to see how let's do like 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 you can see how that's very transparent but you can see how you can kind of push these values to make I just put in the same number again 0.1 how you can make this kind of transparency uh, cloud type of look and if you want thicker clouds you can adjust both of these values to make uh, thicker clouds with uh, less uh, see-through uh, properties there. So play around with those values. You can also remap this as well using these ramps to get whatever type of look that you want. So if I like do something like this, you can see how see-through uh, our edges are. So something like that. So a lot of control here. You can even adjust the color. So what is that color getting scattered? So something like blue and then you can go into the absorption change what color is getting absorbed and you can see that it's a little luminant like that color is spilling over which is pretty cool so a lot of cool looks that you can have going on there just gonna set that back to default on both of these so I'd say that's looking good we'll close out of the redshift volume material and you know you could be at the point where it's like actually this looks pretty uh, good uh, that looks pretty stylized, uh, but I'm still seeing a lot of those chunky uh, values in here. So what we can do to kind of smooth everything out so we're not seeing those pronounced little uh, bumps is going into our volume builder and using something called a fog smooth. And if you want to think of your voxels as 3D pixels, you can think of your fog smooth as like a Gaussian blur for those pixels. And as I apply that, you can see how that kind of smooth out these details. And we're getting a little bit of that weird pixelation back, but uh, that's okay for right now. Because right now it just looks a little bit too uh, fluffy. We kind of lost some of that detail, some of that fidelity. So what we can do is I just explained how we have these like black and white values, the values of zero to one, black to white and that kind of controls the transparency of your different uh, voxels, what we can do is actually use noise to adjust those black and white values and create a more fluffy looking clouds. Okay, so how we can introduce some noise to our fog volume is two ways. We can either use a random field or a shader field. And what I can do is just drag and drop this shader field as a child of the volume builder if I click on my volume builder, you can see there's our shader field and you can use all these different types of blending modes. So just like fractal noise in After Effects or Photoshop, you can multiply these grayscale values in a shader field. If we actually go to our shader field and load up some noise right now, there's nothing in this shader field. So let's go and grab some noise and let's make this really pronounced. So let's just crank up the contrast and you're going to see that nothing's happening because we gotta go to our volume builder and change this mode from normal to multiply. And you can see that everything just kind of disappeared. And they didn't disappear, they just kind of transformed into a weird cube. And that's because by default, the creation space of this noise or whatever is being generated by the shader field is just a tiny box. So if we change this to object below, it's gonna generate that noise from the shader field using the volume of the objects below. So now you can see, let's go to our shader field, these black and white values eating away at some of our volume here. So whatever is black, if you multiply it on white, it's gonna make it darker, right? So whatever is white in our noise is gonna just remain and maintain that uh, volume opacity. And whatever is black is going to eat away at uh, that volume there. So what we can do is we use that really nice Ronoi one noise for our displacer. Let's try that same noise in here in our shader field and let's just increase the scale and you can see that these look like uh almost looks like coral if this is uh, small enough which is kind of interesting but what we want to do is actually invert this 
So invert the black and white value. So all I need to do is just, I'm just gonna click and drag on this color chip, make that color to black, and then color one, I'll change to white. So I'll just put 100 in the value area there. And now whatever's white is gonna be maintained and whatever's black again is going to be multiplied and, and eat away at our volume. And you can see that if we make this small enough, this kind of looks like a you know cool effect in itself, these nice little poofs, okay? So what we can do at this point is maybe adjust the contrast here in the high clip. And you can see how we have these nice little puffs. It looks almost like a cotton ball. And now we can just like adjust the, you know, the global scale here, 50. And again, this looks like a cool look by itself. But what we can do to try to smooth all this out is go to our volume builder and when we applied that shader field it applied it on top of the fog smooth so these fog smooth layers or really any of these layers here you can think of as adjustment layers and they're only going to affect the layers below them so if i want this fog smooth to affect and smooth out the black and white values from this shader field i just need to place it below that fog smooth and you should start to see that kind of get smoothed out and now we have these little uh, like fluffy clumps making up this cloud now. So now I can go in here and change the seed and see what all these different seeds look like and just get the type of look that you want. Okay, whether they're, you know, it's a big noise or I bring this to 100, a little small noise, whatever you want to do, everything is completely live. Our displacer, everything. And that's kind of the lovely part about all of this. If I bring this high clip down even more, you can see what goes on there. So I'm liking something right around here, okay? And you can see that we're kind of getting a little bit of see-through right there. And we can adjust that by either going into this volume and making this a little thicker, or we can go in and use yet another fog modifier, which is this fog multiply. And what this is gonna do is basically take those black and white values and multiply them by a number. So if I do two, you can see that's going to actually just thicken everything up and apply even more opacity and more volume to this volume, the volume to the volume, sure. We can even go into the voxel distance and this is basically like your Gaussian blur strength and bring that up even more to smooth all that out. And this is looking uh, really nice. Now, another thing we can do is, again, the, you could stop right here or you can add even more high fidelity detail. And you can do that by, we got this big detail, this big noise here, we can duplicate this shader field, and let's go to our volume builder here. You can see that by default, the creation space is set to box again, so we'll need to make sure the objects below is chosen, and we choose multiply for this as well. And we can do a thing like making this global scale very small, and you can see that that's breaking everything up even more, or we can go in here and change the noise type to something like wavy turbulence, and let's right click on this arrow here to reset this high clip to its default value. And you can see how this noise is just breaking this up even more and creating this really nice effect. And if you decide that actually, you know what, I don't wanna see through this cloud as much, we can go, we can go back into this redshift volume here and just beef that up, make it thicker, and then just add more light scatter through there. So you can always come back in here and adjust stuff like that, or Again, we can do a little bit of both, maybe even going into this fog multiply and doing 2.5 and thickening that up even more. Now you notice that the second shader field, which if I double click, let's rename this details, you can see that this is above the fog multiply and the smooth. So fog multiply is not acting upon unless we make this lower in the stack and this fog smooth not acting upon unless we have this layer below the smooth but you can see that that just totally smooths everything out so it's kind of nice to have the finer details up even higher in the stack so it's not being smoothed out by that fog smooth at all so i think this multiply is is kind of making things a little bit pixelated so i'm just going to bring that down a little bit maybe this shader field with the details we can make this even more subtle by just lowering the contrast to maybe negative 30. Just see that, hopefully that this picks up, but just a little bit of that nice fine detail there. So this is actually rendering really fast. So if I just grab my light here, we can kind of rotate this around to just see how this actually looks, depending on the light angle. 
And I would say, you know, this is looking really nice. Now, of course, there's tons of things we can experiment with, with different noises, adjusting the different uh, scales of these noises to whatever we want. But one thing I want to do is just like we added high fidelity detail to this fog volume using this second shader field. I want to do something similar by creating nice little uh, wispy floofs or something like that uh, using a second displacer. So let me show you what I mean by the floofs. Let me just hit Q and what that's going to do is deactivate this generator or our volume builder and I'm just going to command click and drag to duplicate this displacer. I'm just going to name this displacer floofs and uh, that sounds like a fake name of something. I'm displacer floofs. Uh, I'm going to go into this noise now and let's change this noise type to wavy turbulence and we'll just decrease the scale here and you can see how this is kind of crumpling everything up. Let me turn off this infinite light because it's kind of blowing everything out. But you can see this nice little crumpled detail. If I increase the contrast you can see what's going on there. Now what I want to do is make it so when I go into my object tab here that I'm just pushing outwards and not inwards. So what I'm going to do is change this type from intensity centered which is displacing inwards and outwards and just choose intensity which means that we're just displacing outwards. And now at this point what I can do is go back into my noise and adjust the low clip and the high clip to have it so only the tiny bits of noise are displacing on different parts of this object. So this is looking kind of not so uh, great at this point. If I adjust the scale a little bit and maybe the seed and let's turn back on our volume builder by hitting Q again and we'll see what this looks like. You can see wherever we have that second displacement, the displacer floofs, we have this pushing away from our main volume here and it's got that lighter opacity because it's that blacker uh, color in our viewport here. So that means that it's got a value closer to 0% opacity and you can just have a lot of fun with this to create however many floofs you want. Little wispy details like this. I mean, that's a that's a that's a lot. Let's hit Q again. And you can see exactly how much we're displacing there. It doesn't look all that great. Let's maybe go into our displacer. Maybe that's too much. Displacing a little bit too much. And we can again always you know change the type of displacement. Maybe remove the octave so it's a little bit simpler of a noise. Or we can you know add more octave so it has even more detail. But I think maybe something like this looks uh, pretty nice. Bring this up even more so we'll have a little floof right there. Turn back on our volume builder. You can see that just adding that little bit of detail. Let's turn that off. Turn that back on again. You can see how that just adds a little bit of that extra personality. I don't know. Do, do clouds have personalities? But just the, the, the style of it where you have all these wispy floofs uh, all, all over the place. Uh, so again, like... This is such a, a flexible workflow. You can literally place any object in this volume builder and have all these effects be applied to it. So let me just go and let's grab this scene here, which basically all I did was same kind of workflow. I have this heart and this star, like Lucky Charms, but the same kind of workflow. You can see that we have a fairly dense mesh and apply the same kind of effects. And we have these different types of shapes here that are underneath this single volume builder and we get these really nice uh, stylized clouds, just some simple spheres, a heart. Uh, you can see just how uh, flexible this is. So the best part about this workflow is you can actually save these fog volumes out as VDB files. So you can share them, sell them. I'll be sharing a bunch of them that you can download as well. And the great thing is you can load these VDB files up and they're going to render very quickly in C4D. And that's even including if you have an animated VDB. So before I show you how to actually export out a VDB, let me show you a couple ways you can actually animate uh, this cloud to make it kind of undulate. And you can do that either by animating the noise in the actual shaders by just changing this animation speed to anything but zero, or you can go into the displacer, and this is actually easier to show here in the viewport, 
and go into uh, let's actually go yeah let's go into this noise and this animation speed let's choose one and if I hit play you can see how we have this let's actually turn off the redshift render view there and you can see how the noise is kind of undulating and animating and you can bring this down to say you know point two and if you want this noise to loop you can basically put in however many seconds your animation is so for my case this is 90 frames or 30 seconds I'll put in a loop period of three and by doing that that means it's gonna loop every three seconds and so once this gets to frame 90 it's just gonna loop back uh, to frame zero and look really good now another way you can actually have the noise move through your object so if I put a movement of one here and a speed of 1% and hit play you can see how this is moving from right to left and if I put a negative one in here you can see it's moving left to right and that's just one other way of animating the noise and animating the cloud so it's a animated fog volume here so I'm not gonna animate this but you could save out this VDB animation so what I'm gonna do is just turn back on this volume builder and to save this out to be able to say like clone or send to a coworker or to even you know make your own asset pack of clouds you just want to select your volume builder go to file export VDB and this is where you can choose whether you want to include animation and the one thing I will say about all of this is let me cancel out of here is you want to pay attention to your voxel size okay let me turn this back on again let's get this render view going the lower this voxel size the bigger this VDB file is gonna be and the more detail you're gonna have on your uh, voxel anyways so the bigger the size the smaller the VDB file so if you're animating a VDB with this low of a voxel size be prepared to have a fairly beefy file but for a still, you know, you can get as low as you want. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's go to export volume.vdb. Select it only, so it's only going to export my selected object here, which is fine. Hit OK. I'll do cloud tutorial start two. And then to load up a saved VDB, what we're going to do is go to Redshift Objects, Redshift Volume. And let's actually hold Control or Command and click. To just turn off all these objects here so now we just have the redshift volume and then to load up that vdb we're just going to go to our file path here let's load up that vdb file you're going to see this little bounding box area and you're not going to see anything and that's because we need to just drag and drop that redshift volume material onto it and voila we have our vdb here looking really nice and then what we can do is very easily clone it to make a whole bunch more clouds get this cloner scale everything up a little bit let's maybe make a whole bunch of clouds here and now we got our lovely compose our shot here we have a lovely cylinder in the clouds which is uh, just lovely and this is just so dang fast uh, at least on uh, my setup with two 3090s uh, but Redshift volumes render unbelievably fast. It's pretty incredible that you can do something like this. You would not want to try something like this with a standard renderer uh, or physical render because uh, it'll just your 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 computer will just explode and catch into flames. Uh, so now we got our a nice NFT that we can mint and make a uh, million dollars. All right, so there's your little crash course in creating fluffy, floofy little clouds. If you want to check out more cloud tutorials that I've made, you can check them out over here or over here or maybe both sides. I'm not quite sure. If you like this tutorial, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel if you like what you're seeing here. Hope to see you again soon in the next tutorial. Bye, everybody.